you, God. There's healing. There's healing. And, hey, Megan, uh, Megan said, Pastor Carter plays those tapes. <laughs> it's a CD, Megan. I call them tapes. Yeah, I call them tapes. But it's a CD, praise God. And you can get that CD. Actually, you can get the video of that song by uh, going on YouTube and dialing, uh, typing in the name of the, the artist. And and uh, that song will come up. It's called Healing. Um, and then and you and this is where we get a lot of a lot of our songs but I happen to have the whole CD and it is so blessed it is so blessed I mean our uh, songs are beautiful one of the songs on this CD it's uh Jesus lover of my soul and then uh, that song is superimposed upon box listen to this box Jesu joy of man's desiring. And so I get the joy, the blessing of hearing. And then on top of that, the singer is singing, Jesus lover of my soul, let me hide myself. Man, that blows my mind. That picks me up. Playing something like this, how can you be down when you hear something like this? Bach box instrument instrument box great classic jesus lover of my soul i mean uh, jesus lover of my soul and then jesu joy of man's desiring uh, oh it is so beautiful it is so beautiful ladies and gentlemen god has so many ways that he wants to encourage us welcome welcome to the online church praise god what's the online church it's a church where we reach people who uh, may not attend a regular church or may be in transition or some are sick and shut in, can't get out to church, or some may be frustrated with the church. Some may not be able to find a church in their area. We've got a precious lady named Annika. She's in Sweden, and she listens. She tunes in from Sweden, and Annika says, there is no real church in my area. And so we make this available to her, and her, she and Annika and Richard and their family listen to the messages on the online church. And then we've got a friend named Memo in Belgium. Memo uh, listens to the online church, and then many of our friends in many African nations and in the Caribbean and European nations. We've got friends in Paris, France. They listen to the online church. We don't boast about the online church. We boast about Jesus, and we give God the praise that he can use this uh, portion of the body of Christ to bring the word to people who may not be reached by the brick-and-mortar church. By the way, we do not uh, put down the brick-and-mortar church, and we're not going to bash the, the members of the brick-and-mortar church. Uh, we want you to continue to support your local church wherever it is, and uh, we thank God. But, you know, I'm writing a new book entitled the, the Online Church and the Great Commission. This book will be available in December. It's about the online church and the Great Commission. And in this book, we're calling the online church the new frontier. Ladies and gentlemen, there are people out there who cannot re be reached by the brick-and-mortar church. Some will not attend church. 80% of Americans do not attend church, and the, the percentage is even worse in Europe. But God loves people, and he does not want anyone to perish. And so we're teaching about the online church in this new book. I'm teaching people how to develop an online church. How you Listen, how you can reach people through a church service, through a Bible study, through a... a, 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 a a women's meeting or a men's fellowship or a children's church, and, and God's going to use a little Nathan in a mighty way. God's going to launch this fellow forward uh, with the help of his parents and help of his brother, Nikki, and his sister, Destiny. It, there is no limit. Megan, there is no limit. I know Megan, Megan's ordained and waiting for God to use her. Megan, God can launch you. Pastor Mark Wolverton, God can launch you even greater in the kingdom of God. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, uh, Robert Peary, there are, God's got areas where you can minister to people. It doesn't have to be a church setting. It can be a fellowship. It can be a 
Bible study where you can get your friends online and, and, and minister the Word of God. You can have a prayer, online prayer service. We're talking about the online church as the new frontier to reach all the mass of the people who do not attend a regular church. And Jesus said, Go ye into all the world. And one of the ways in which we're going, we're taking Jesus at his word in obedience. He said, go ye into all the world. And so the Holy Ghost has helped us to set up and establish the online church. And we're going. We're going. We're going wherever God sends us. And we just praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And so I want to encourage you. I want, I'll coach you if you want, want me to. I'll mentor you. And uh, we just praise God. I thank God for what Pastor Paul uh, Bagley is doing uh, as, as he reaches out worldwide. And there are many others who are realizing that there's a frontier out there, and it is unlimited. We can reach the masses of people in the name of Jesus. And so we just give a shout out to the Holy Spirit and for how he's moving in our hearts. And I give a shout out to each and every one of you for coming online and being uh, uh, attentive to the word of God and your love, not only for your love for God, but your love for me, your love for one another. And I just Praise God for how you minister to one another and greet and encourage one another in the chat room. We just give God the praise. Thanks again, Nathan, for leading us in prayer today. And we want to uh, go right into our lesson. We want to go right into our lesson uh, as we take a look at our subject today. It's entitled, How to Protect Your Children. How to Protect your children, how to protect your children. Uh, God has, has me in the last several weeks teaching on spiritual warfare. My friends, this is spiritual warfare. Now, here's the situation. Here's what, and, and a lot of us have entered into these situations unknowingly. Listen to this. Many young people fall in love, and they say, let's get married. Okay, love happens. Love happens. I mean, hey, hey, uh, 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 for a young man, a young lady comes across his, his path, and she just blows his mind. I mean, he is captivated. Uh, uh, I know what it's like to be captivated, and you can't do anything about it. You just can't do anything about it. As my mother would say, you were smitten. You were smitten. You couldn't prevent it happening if you tried. Okay, and so... Uh, uh, then the songwriter said a long time ago, when, when a, b a boy meets girl and love begins, oh, what a feeling uh, that you get deep within. I should know because I'm in love. I'm a boy. She's a girl. And all the stars up above, all you can see is her. And, uh, or for the girl, all you can see is him. And the stars up above, the world can be uh, uh, crumbling all around you, but all you can see is her. I knew you've been there, Ryan and Tara. I know he's still there. Uh, I know you're there, Robert Peary. I know you're there, uh, Dustina. <clears throat> I know you're there. When, when Mike came on the scene, you couldn't help you. Uh, when, when Mike came on the scene, ladies and gentlemen, Dustina had a case of the I can't help it. I can't help myself. Even if I could help myself, I wouldn't help myself. That's what love does for you. That's what love does for you. Well, there are certain things that come with love, okay? What if, what if the church would teach, actually make it a requirement, make it a requirement, but if you made it a requirement, people wouldn't do it. But what if the church uh, promoted young love by putting young, uh, 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 new, uh, young engaged people, betrothed people in a class? Why not teach them? teach people who are about to be married about spiritual warfare. I wished I had gotten this a long time ago uh, because once you get married, I mean, uh, it, everything's looking good. Let me, everything's looking good while you're courting, while you're dating. Uh, but when, when, when you put that ring on her finger, when, when, when you say I will or I do, all hell breaks loose. Satan, Satan is waiting. He's waiting to 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 jump in there and start some mess. And 
I married a couple one time, and they went off to the islands for a honeymoon, and they came back the next week, and the man came up to my house looking broke, busted, and disgusted, all dejected. I said, Joe, uh, what's the matter, man? Uh, didn't you enjoy your honeymoon? He said, honeymoon? Man, she left me the night we got married. Man, I'm t ladies and gentlemen, Satan is laying in wait like a rattlesnake waiting to strike. And so what if the church would teach couples to get prepared for marriage? Because marriage is married. Most couples just get prepared for the wedding. I mean, I mean, she, spends, she has all these plans, and he spends all this money, and they, and they get their families together. Most couples prepare for a wonderful wedding ceremony, but most do not prepare for beyond the wedding. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, it's rare to see couples reaching 60, 70 years of marriage. Uh, Jackie's mom and dad are, have been married, I think, for about 69 years, close to that. Uh, my parents were married for over 70 years uh, before they both passed away. Ladies and gentlemen, it takes planning and preparation, but most of all, it takes the anointing of God upon a marriage. And so what if churches had... Uh, spiritual warfare classes for intendees so that they can prepare the man and woman, the couple, for what to look for in their marriage. Because uh, once the marriage takes place, in many cases, all hell breaks loose. Because what you have, you have two proud spirits coming together, and they're clashing. Two proud spirits, two spoiled brats who are spoiled mostly by their parents, and they think the world revolves around them, and then they say, I do, I will, and they take these vows, and, and, and most people take these vows. They don't realize what they're saying, to uh, love and to hold, to uh, love and to cherish, uh, uh, in sickness and in health, till uh, for richer and for poorer. Man, uh, most marital fights are about money, for richer and for poor, for poor, forget about that vow. Until death us do part, ladies and gentlemen, I've just gave, given you an example of a couple who broke up the night of their honeymoon. The marriage was over the night of their honeymoon. And he came back to me broke, busted, and disgusted. Ladies and gentlemen, the church needs to prepare people for marriage. And then what if there were mandatory classes uh, for couples who, uh, where the lady is pregnant and they're expecting their first child. Ladies and gentlemen, if the church would step in and step up to the plate and get serious about uh, uh, training people in the way of the Lord, because young couples don't know which way to go. Uh, 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 when she gets pregnant, some men go crazy. They go off the deep end. I wasn't ready for this. Or, no, uh, get an abortion. Well, abortion is against the will of God. Abortion is a sin. And so uh, the church needs to train people. Most of all, the church needs to train people in spiritual warfare, how to train your children in the way of the Lord, how to weather the storms of life, how to bind Satan, how to recognize Satan when he comes against your marriage, how to recognize Satan when he comes against, against your children. Ladies and gentlemen, the church needs to train people. You know that sweet little baby, uh, 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 you're, you're cuddling that little newborn, and oh, she's so cute. Oh, he's so cute. Oh, he's got my eyes. He's got my hair. Oh, his complexion. Oh, she's so sweet. Oh, she's so innocent. Look at this. Oh, this is a little you and me. And, and couples go crazy over this. It's a little you and me. And, and, and ladies and gentlemen, two years later, you got a monster on your hand. You got a monster. Those terrible twos. Oh, well, it's just a stage they go through. It's called the terrible twos. No, the terrible twos are when demons manifest themselves in that cute little thing you cuddled and said, this is a little you and me. I know I'm preaching today. I know I'm preaching today. Hallelujah. Praise God. Holy Spirit, anoint this preaching. Anoint this word. Let the word go forth in the mighty name of Jesus. And then uh, when, the, when your child does make it through the terrible twos, and then uh, uh, they grow up, and then they become selfish, they become self-centered, uh, many are spoiled, uh, uh, 
they're taught that they're better than anyone else. And hey, uh, you, you need to teach your child that they're not any less than anyone else. But don't go overboard teaching them that you're better than anyone else. Look at the story of Joseph and his brothers. Joseph was a spoiled brat. And, and his father, Jacob, put a coat of many colors on jo Joseph, but did and dressed the other kids in drab, in, 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 in uh, uh, not too uh, colorful stuff. Okay, so we, you know, and we know which child we uh, uh, love more than the other, and the children know when you love one of them better than the others. And so, ladies and gentlemen, these are things that the church is not teaching. We teach this on the online church, and we're available to counsel, because once you get married, a whole realm of things open up. And Satan hates marriage, because marriage is the closest thing uh, to the relationship with God. Satan hates it, and he's going to do all he can to destroy it, he's going he's gonna to see which one is a controlling person in this relationship, and Satan will make that person even more controlling, which one is the, the victim in this situation, and he'll make that person more victimized before long, divorce court, divorce court, and, and, and hatred and bitterness, and, and oftentimes that hatred and that bitterness lasts for a lifetime. I know people in their second or third marriages who have not gotten over the previous marriage, and so they bring stuff into the second marriage. And then, ladies and gentlemen, what if uh, you get married again and you've got children? You have children, he has children, he has children, you have children, and you bring children, and then the children come together, and then uh, they don't often gel. They don't often uh, 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 accept one another, and then you've got conflict in the household, and Satan is working on that 24-7. And so, ladies and gentlemen, we're talking today about how to protect your children. We're talking about, ladies and gentlemen, pulling your head up out of the sand, taking a good look at your situation, and even if you've got to look in the mirror and say, I need help, it might not be your husband, it might not be your wife, it might be, I need help, I'm selfish, I'm spoiled, I've got a, a, a control spirit, uh, I'm an abuser, uh, 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 I've got the drug problem, I've got that secret romance. I'm living in adultery. I'm committing fornication. I'm looking at uh, 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 porno. I'm, I'm not pleased. I, I've not given my heart into this. Ladies and gentlemen, oftentimes when you try to find out what is the matter with this marriage, the finger might point to the thumb and the thumb might point back to you, and most people are in denial. And so people go to church. They sit up in church on Sunday and they listen to the services, or they come on the online church and listen to the, the messages, listen to the songs, listen to the prayers. But then uh, the, the bottom line is, what are you going to do about what God says? And then uh, people get mad at the preacher. I'm not going to listen to Pastor Carter anymore because he's preaching holiness and righteousness, and I ain't ready for that. And uh, I want somebody to take my side. I want somebody to get in the pulpit and tell my husband he's a no good, cutthroat, lying, no down, low down, snaky dog. That's what mo mo many women, they want to hear a preacher who's going to uh, 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 jump on their husband from the pulpit. He's a no good, low down dog. Your mama told you not to marry him and you should have listened to your mama, but it's too late. But he's still a no down, low down dog. His mama was a dog. His daddy was a dog. His grandmama was a dog. That's what a lot of, a lot of Christians want to hear that sort of thing so that they can get stroked. But ladies and gentlemen, God wants us to wake up and hear what thus saith the Lord. That is why it is so important to Study the Word of God. Most couples get married and they don't know diddly about the Word of God. They're so much in love. They think that love is going to carry them through the storms of life. Oh, we can weather this storm, baby. Just stay in the ship with me. The sea might be rocky. The wind might be blowing. But we got love, love, love. Love, sweet love. Love going to keep this ship afloat. 
au contraire, au contraire, as they say in, in French. Love will not keep that boat afloat. The only one who can keep that boat afloat is Jesus. And the only way Jesus can keep that boat afloat is that each person surrender your will to the Lord God. You, it's not I'm right and she's wrong or he's right and I'm wrong. or It's not that. It's submitting to the Lord Jesus Christ. Unless a marriage is, is built on the name of Jesus Christ, unless a family, a household is built on Jesus Christ, it will fall. It's like the man building his house on, on sand. The storms came, the winds came, the waters washed that house away, the wind blew it away. But that man who built his house on a solid foundation, on a solid rock, the winds blew against it, the rains came, the storms, the cyclones, the tsunamis, but that house stood. The Word of God says, And we shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth our fruit in our own season. And so many couples approach uh, the marriage vows without a solid foundation in Jesus Christ. And here's another thing. Many of them don't want to be counseled. Many don't want to be counseled. Sometimes I've, I've seen women. They're so glad to get a man. I mean, I mean, in my first church, I, I, I had women in the church. Whenever a new man came in the door, they would name it and claim it. That was back in the 80s. Name it and claim it. Yeah, uh, Brother brother Percy, that's my husband. I'd claim him in the name of I mean, the man can be fresh out of jail. He can be out of his luck. He can be down and out, homeless, jobless. And somebody's going to claim it because he's a man. He's a man. He's a man. And, and I had uh, women praying for a husband. I've had men praying for a wife. I just want me a wife. Well, you didn't treat the first wife right. You abused her. You beat her. You, you, you're still calling her names. You're still kicking her to the curb. You ain't paying any, any alimony. You're broke, busted, and disgusted. You won't get a job. You're lazy. You're no good lazy. And, but they didn't want to hear that. I want a wife. In other words, a lot of men are looking for a mother. Come on. Come on, men. Come on, men. I'm going to lay it out there. A lot of men are looking for another mother. Somebody who's going to take care of them. Somebody who's going to wipe their behinds and change their diapers. That's what a lot of men want. They want someone to take care of every aspect of their life. Just take care of me. I love you, baby, to the cows come home. Just take care of me. And then, and then there are a lot of women looking for a daddy. They're looking for a daddy. I want someone who's going to defend me, who's going to stand up for me, whether I'm right or wrong. And many times they're wrong. And, 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 and they want somebody, someone to defend them when they're wrong. We're talking about, ladies and gentlemen, I'm supposed to be talking about how to protect your children. Let's look at some scripture. Turn with me to Psalm 27. I can see right now this is going to be a two-part service. We're going to have to continue this next week. It's going to get gooder and gooder, better and better. Turn to Psalm 127. Psalm 127. The scripture says, Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman waketh but in vain. So many marriages are built on romantic love. Romantic love uh, is fleeting. She looked good today. She looked like a dog tomorrow. He looked good today. He looked like a dog tomorrow. And, 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 and what appears to be good one day will look like evil the next day. And uh, uh, I, didn't know he, I didn't know that those were false teeth. I thought they were his real teeth. I didn't know that that was a wig she was wearing. I thought that was her real hair. And, and, and ladies and gentlemen, a lot of people have gotten married and have awakened uh, a few days later and said, what? Is this what I married? I mean, I mean, because we can polish ourselves up. We can, we can paint ourselves up. We can dial ourselves all up. But nothing can cover the ugliness of the soul. Nothing can cover the ugliness of the soul. A lot of people have awakened. Please mute your phone. Please mute your phone. 
Thank you. Mute your phone. Uh, star six. Mute your phone. A lot of couples have awakened and said, oh, my God, look what I am into. You mean I've got this for the rest of my life, and that, from that day on, the marriage goes downhill. In, in, the, in, the, in the case of the young man I talked about, Joe, his marriage went downhill the night of the honeymoon, the very night of the marriage. So Psalm 27 says, except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman waketh but in vain. And so the house must be built on the solid rock of Jesus Christ. The city must be built on Jesus Christ. Unless Jesus Christ is Lord of that city, the watchman, the night watchman, the army, they're keeping watch in vain, ladies and gentlemen. It is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows, for so he giveth his beloved sleep. Now I know there are some of you uh, listening today. And some of you who will be listening to the recording, you're staying up late, you can't sleep. You're rising up early because you couldn't sleep. You're eating the bread of sorrows. You're wondering what's going on. You need help. And, 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 and some of you are stubbornly resisting, yielding to the Holy Spirit. The Bible says you must be born again. You cannot solve your problems with with, with, without first giving your heart to Jesus and receiving him as Savior and Lord. You cannot solve your problems until first you repent of your sins and, and ask the Lord Jesus to come in and create in you a new heart, a new spirit. It begins with making Jesus the Lord of your, your life. Then couples make Jesus the Lord of your marriage. It's not, I'm right and she's wrong or uh, uh, Mama was right and, and Daddy was wrong, or Uncle Joe was right and Cousin Willie was wrong. No, unless you surrender your marriage to Jesus Christ. I know people on their third, fourth, and fifth marriages still haven't got it right. Why? Because that pride, they're too proud. They're too proud to surrender to Jesus Christ. Ladies and gentlemen, invite Jesus. If this is your second time around in marriage, Ask Jesus Christ to come in and be the Lord of your marriage. If your spouse is not saved, then you need to go back to my last two videos, last two weeks, and learn how to build a hedge of thorns around that wayward member of your family, whether it be your husband, whether it be your mama, your daddy, your children, or if you're the culprit, you need to ask God to build a hedge of thorns around you and keep that hedge of thorns around you forever. Ask him never to take that hedge of thorns away from you. This way, you will not be successful in doing anything that's outside the will of God, and Satan cannot cause people or cause demons to come and attack you and destroy you and pull you from the will of God. If you build that hedge of thorns around your husband, he will be so uncomfortable in the lifestyle, in his stubbornness, in re his rebellion. He will get so sick and tired of being himself that he will surrender to the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, I've taught this principle for over 30 years. It works I've had people uh, get angry with me because they build the hedge of thorns and they, they see their husband going down. They see him, he loses his job, he loses his girlfriends, he loses his car, he loses his bank account. Then he's broke, busted, and disgusted. He's right where God wants him to be, where God can build him and start building your marriage. But I've seen ladies, I've seen women who, who have their husband arrested for abuse. The husband blackened her eyes, beat her up, knocked her teeth out, uh, 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 punched her in one lung collapse, and, and had the man arrested three days later she goes to the bank and borrows money or gets it from her family and bails that sucker out. Don't bail him out. When you build that hedge of thorns around him or her, don't bail them out. Jail is where they ought to be. Prison is where they ought to be. If a man is a woman abuser, or have him arrested. Let him stay in jail. Build a hedge of thorns around him. Let him not be 
comfortable in anything he loves to do until he surrenders to the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me tell you this, ladies. You let that abusing man spend some time in prison, and you let you let uh, 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 the guard in, in, of his cell open the cell door at night and let a couple men come in uh, to tune him up a little bit, and, and, and that happens in prison. You let that man suffer some abuse from some of those other inmates, and a lot of it is sexual abuse where men make women out of men. And I'll tell you one thing, that man will cry out for mercy. He will never, when he gets out of jail, he will never hit you again. He'll never abuse you again. We're talking about tough love. But I've seen some, I've seen some real solid Christian men and women who when God began to work on their spouse, now they hated what their spouse was doing, but then they get a soft heart when they see their spouse crying out, Mama, or oh, help me. Well, I won't do it again. And they, and they believe the lie that the guy is tell, telling or the woman's telling, and they take the hedge off that person. Ladies and gentlemen, I say keep that hedge on them until they surrender, until they submit to the Lord God Almighty. Keep that hedge around them, and God will work it out. Yes, I know we're going to have to continue this next week. Let's go back to 127, verse 3. Lo, children are an heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. Children are an heritage. Children are a blessing from the Lord, ladies and gentlemen. Every child ever born is a blessing from the Lord, whether that child was born out of wedlock or no. That child is a wanted child, and children need to know. I know so many children who grow up into manhood and or womanhood and feel rejected because they were told they were not wanted. And the worst thing, the worst thing a woman can say to a child is, I should have had you aborted. That's the worst thing you can tell a child. When you speak that, automatically, bloom. The spirit of rejection, the demon of rejection jumps into that child, and that child's going to act all kinds of crazy and cause all kinds of hell and, and live a miserable life. And so children are inherited from the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. That's God's reward. The fruit of the womb is God's reward. Verse 4, as arrows, arrows are in the hand of a mighty man, so are the children of his youth. Men have a lot of children. That's a, a great future for that man and for that woman. Now, here's the thing. Here's the thing. And I see this in, all across America, and I've seen it in a African countries and other nations. Men boast about making babies. And they make babies without marrying the mother. Ladies and gentlemen, any man can make a baby. Any man with any kind of, any man can make a baby, okay? But it takes a real man to raise a child. Come on now. Any male can make a baby. But it takes a real man to train up a child in which the way, in way he should go. And, 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 and ladies and gentlemen, I, I, I mean, I mean, I live in Georgia. There was a case, a man, he, one man, he boasted, boasted about having 30 kids by 30 different women. Ladies and gentlemen, first of all, I blame the women for being stupid enough to sleep with that fool. Any man who has had 30 children by 30 different women, there is something wrong. And, and, and here, here again, you got so many people, men and women, women, I got to have a woman. I gotta have a woman. That's what a man says. A man, a woman. I gotta have a man. God. And they take anything coming down the pike. They don't know a thing about them. They don't know the background. Uh, uh, they gotta have a man. Gotta have a man. Gotta have some sex. God. Ladies and gentlemen, that's demonic. That's satanic. And so, except the Lord build the house, and the God's way for having children is through marriage. God, God's way is through marriage. And if you had a child out of wedlock. Then repent. I'm not bashing you. Repent. Ask God to forgive you. Then keep on going with your life. Verse 4 says, As arrows are in 
the hand of a mighty man, so are children of his youth. He can shoot that arrow. Your children can go much further than you can go, and they can accomplish much more in the name of Jesus. If you train them in the way of the Lord and ask the Lord to guide them and to keep them. Verse 5, happy is the man that hath his quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but they shall speak with the enemies in the gate. The man who has a lot of children, we're talking about the married man, the married man. I'm not talking about the baby makers. Uh, oh, those children produce out of wedlock. No, 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 that is not a happy man. That's an ungodly man who's producing children uh, out of wedlock. God's way, God's way, it goes back to Genesis God's way, a man shall leave his mother and father and join to his wife, ladies and gentlemen, to his wife. And so read Psalm 27. Look at the blessings of Psalm 27. And look at the blessings, that fourth verse, that fifth verse talks about the joy, the happiness of a man and a woman who have many children. And they have trained those children in the way in which they should go. Those parents ought not to worry about getting old. Those parents, if, they've, if you've raised your children right, you don't have to worry about getting old. Who's going to take care of you? Who's going to carry on the family legacy, the heritage? If you have done your part in training them in the ways of the Lord, God will take care of them, and they will pass on the legacy to future generations, praise God. And God is looking for future generations of godly men and women, godly boys and girls who have been trained in the way of the Lord. But if you forsake and neglect your responsibility and let your children go their own way, then the results are devastating. We're talking about how to protect your children. I guess we're going to call this step one, part one. Let's look at some scriptures, and then we'll probably close with these scriptures. Next week, I'll spend more time in showing you what to do specifically. If you have married, and, and let's say, I'm going to start with the second marriage, and you have children from a previous marriage or uh, uh, your spouse's previous marriage, and those children are rebelling, that child is not calling you uh, his or her mother or his or her father, and they're just rebellious, they're troublemakers. We're going to show you by the word of God what you can do to bring that child under submission and to get your household righteous and holy because Satan wants to attack, Satan wants to destroy your family, and we're going to show you how to shut Satan down by the authority of the name of Jesus. We will show you. Uh, let's look at some, some scriptures. Think about these. Psalm 127, uh, 3 to 5, we just read that. Proverbs 22, 6. Train up a child in the way he shall go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. If you take the time, you consecrate your children, train them in the way of the Lord, you teach them the word of God, when they're old, even though they may drift, they may backslide, They'll come back to home. They'll come back, and then we're going to teach you how to build that hedge of thorns and make sure that child comes back. Because if that child's still living, there's hope. Proverbs twenty-two fifteen: Foolishness is bound in the heart of a child. I know, because I was a child. I was foolish. Foolishness is bound in the heart of a child. But the rod of correction shall drive it from him. Ladies and gentlemen, you're, talking, you're looking at a former foolish child who is now an old man who's wiser. And, and, and I thank God for my father who used the rod of chastisement. He did not spare the rod. In fact, he did not spare the belt in my house. Oh, the switch couldn't do it. That little tree branch couldn't do it. He got the belt, and the belt wailed. But when the belt wailed, uh, he, 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 he taught us correction. And I thank God to this day for my father and for the, the rod of chastisement, for the correction. There are so many people, they're afraid to beat their kids. I see marriages where uh, 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 the husband's not allowed to beat the child because the child's not his. And that child knows he can't beat me. 
and that child does not respect the husband. And, 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 and the wife lets it go that way. As they, that's, he, you're not his natural father. Don't you spank him. I'll punish him. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the worst thing you can say to your husband. And so, so ladies and gentlemen, uh, look at the scriptures. So, Proverbs 23, 14. Thou shalt beat him with the rod, and thou shalt deliver his soul from hell. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible supports spanking. The Bible does not support abuse. Uh, the, the, the Bible does not support a uh, 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 cruel treatment, but the Bible supports spanking. Dustina says, they know the paddle. We don't spare the discipline here. You go, Dustina. Go, girl. You go, girl. Come on, Nathan. Say amen. Come on, uh, 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 Destiny. Say amen. Come on, uh, Nikki. Say amen. Y'all know what the paddle's all about. Praise God. And they're going to grow up into great men and women, uh, Dustina. You'll see. So the Bible says, thou shalt beat him with the rod and shall deliver his soul from hell. Spankings help deliver children from hell. The rod and reproof, Proverbs 29, 15. The rod and reproof give wisdom, but a child left to himself bringeth his mother to shame. If you leave a child to himself or herself, you don't spank the child. You don't correct them. You don't chastise them. That's the worst thing you can do. You're going to face the shame at some point in your life. The child left to himself bringeth his mother to shame. Ephesians 6, 1 to 3. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with thee and thou mayest live long on the earth. A lot of children die prematurely. Ladies and gentlemen, it's sad, it's sad, it's sad. Many children die prematurely because they disobey their mother and father. Disobedience leads to death. Disobedience leads to hell, ladies and gentlemen. And let me share this with you about some disobedient children. It's from the Scripture. This is from the Scripture. The Scriptures teach us there is justice when children disobey their parents. Uh, one Scripture, Leviticus 21, 18 to 21. Leviticus 21, 18 to 21. I'm turning to Leviticus. We'll be finished in a moment. Leviticus 21, 18 to 21. Listen to this word. For whosoever man, that, no, that's the wrong one. Leviticus 21 and 18 through 21. Wrong one, so forget that one, forget that one. Anyway, uh, the scripture, and I'll find the right, right scripture. There is, the scripture says, if a man have stubborn and rebellious, if a man have a stubborn and rebellious son which will not obey his voice, or the voice of his father or the voice of his mother, and that after he's been chastened by the parents will not obey the parents, then the parent, here's what the, the Leviticus teaches us. If a man and a woman have a rebellious child and after spanking that child, that child is still rebellious and will not obey the parents, in the Old Testament law, then the parents would take that child to the elders of the city. They would take him to the gate of the city, present him to the elders, explain the situation, let the elders know this child is incorrigible, this child still disrespects us, we've done what the word says do, and then guess what, ladies and gentlemen? The elders would take that child and take the child away from the parents, call a committee, and they would stone that child to death. We're talking about tough love. This is the Old Testament law. God doesn't let that take place now. But ladies and gentlemen, God's word lets us know. He lets us know the severity of disrespect and rebellion. In the Old Testament, before Jesus died on the cross and grace came on the scene, see, a lot of children today are living under grace and mercy. 
A lot of parents are living under grace and mercy. You can disobey God, disrespect God's law, but it's going to come around. It's going to come around. Justice will be done. In the Old Testament, if a child sassed his parents, disrespected his parents, uh, or disrespected his mother and father, and would not uh, uh, show respect, the parents could take the child to the elders of the city, and the elders would take that child and have a committee stone that child to death. And God, God is saying it would be better to, that, to kill that child than to let that child grow up and to be disrespectful. Because, look, if the child is disrespectful to the parents, the child's going to be disrespectful to the rest of society, and the child is going to be disrespectful to God. And so in the Old Testament, mercy came, mercy, justice came quickly to prevent a child from having to destroy a whole lot of people his or her lifetime. God took them out. He, he allowed the, the elders to take them off the scene. Here's another, here's another example of Old Testament justice when children disobey their elders and parents. Ladies and gentlemen, there are children, they will say anything to another person. They will say anything to their parents. In my house, you didn't say anything you wanted to say. If it didn't come out right, my mama would smack the taste out of my mouth, and my father would beat it out. Ladies and gentlemen, I know families where children speak to their parents like their parents are dogs, like their parents are slaves and servants. No, 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 I'll contraire, not in my house. Listen to this. This scripture from Second Kings chapter 2. 23 to 25, and that's a scripture about Elisha, who had just inherited the garment, the mantle, the anointing of Elijah. Elijah had been picked up by a fiery chariot and taken into heaven. Elijah did not die. He was picked up, and he rolled into heaven, and the mantle fell, the, prophet, the prophetic mantle fell on Elisha. And as soon as Elisha accepted the office of prophet, children ran out to him. Forty-two children, they counted. Forty-two children teasing him, saying, Go up, Baldy. Go up, Baldy. Are you going to go up too? Go up, Baldy. And Baldy did not mean that the man had no hair. Baldy was a term they used, children used, to show disrespect to elderly people. Go up, Baldy. Go up, Baldy. you going to go up too? And ladies and gentlemen, they began uh, uh, disrespecting the prophet, the man of God, and the scripture says, out of the woods came two she-bears, and the two she-bears tore those 42 children up. The two she-bears killed the children. Ladies and gentlemen, Old Testament justice was swift, was swift. We're living in a time of grace and mercy where God wants to give you time to get it right. Parents, train up your children in the way in which they should go. Chastise them when you have to. Don't be afraid to beat them. And then if you know, and the church needs to teach parents this from, the, from Jump Street, the church needs to teach couples before they have children how to look for certain things, everything. Everything coming out of the womb is not going to always be cute. You need to know what's in your child. You need to know what demons are in your child, what's influencing, because your children can destroy you, your household, and themselves. But you have the authority given to you by Jesus Christ that when, when Satan raises his ugly head, you can bind Satan and you can cast out those demons from your children. And you can build a hedge of thorns around your children you can do it's your responsibility you have to ask God to build a hedge of thorns God's not going to build a hedge on his own you've got to ask God you've got to look at your children you've got to recognize those demons you've got to recognize that ungodly behavior and then you've got to take the authority use the keys keys to the kingdom the keys to the kingdom. Whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. And then build that hedge of thorns. If you have to build a hedge of thorns around your child, do it. If you have to build a hedge of thorns around your husband, do it. If you have to build a hedge of thorns around yourself, 
do it. And then keep that hedge there. If you have to keep it there forever, keep it there so that your child walks in the ways of the Lord, so that your spouse walks in the ways of the Lord, so that you walk in the ways of the Lord. We're focusing uh, this week, and we'll continue next week, on how to protect your children. We'll talk next week on how to protect your children. We'll give you some specific examples on how to build that head of thorns and, and, and the attitude you're to have. You can't build a head of thorns if you want to kill that child. You, want to, you, you don't want to build that head of thorns if, you, if you're punishing that child. You don't want to build that head of thorns if, if, if you're at, at your, on your last nerve or at the edge of your rope. No, there's a way to do this. We will show you next week. Tune in next week. Uh, on as we continue, how to protect your children, part two. This is Pastor Leroy Carter. Um, we are, are getting ready to sign off on the actual um, recording. But if you have any questions, you can email me, LeroyCarter69 at yahoo.com, or you can call me at 770-559-9710. That's 770-559-9710. One zero. We're going to end our um, recording soon, but I want you to stay online because we sp spend some time with questions and answers and, and ministering. Father God, we thank you. We bless you. Thank you for your word, Lord God. Thank you that you're showing us the way. Lord God, we praise you. We thank you. We bless you and honor you. In Jesus' mighty name, let your word go forth. Let it not return unto you void. Help every household, Lord. Help every parent, every child. And we bless you. We give you the honor and we praise you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Praise God.